Hi guys, I'm Aaron Rump, and today we're going to go over how to use cutter compensation, and that's also known as CRC, cutter radius compensation, okay? So, the first thing I want to look at here is I've got G40, G41, and G42. Now what this means is, if I'm going to turn on G41, okay, rule of thumb, if I turn on cutter comp, I have to turn it off. Okay, so that means when I'm going around my profile, I've got it on, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna move away from the profile and turn it off, okay? So, to give you an example of what G41 means is, if I'm going around the outside of my profile, I don't wanna to have to add half the diameter of my cutter every time I make a Y or X move okay because that is just going to be a lot of addition subtraction and it's going to be a lot of overthinking okay so that's where cutter comp comes into play it's going to make our lives a lot easier because we can program from center line it actually pushes half the radius of the tool off the wall so what does that mean okay so g41 is going up okay so if you'll notice my tool is coming up and if you look at this solid line right here that is what I like to call the line two cut, or it's gonna be my part, okay? So if you'll notice though, it's on the left side of my part. Now looking at this right side, look at this right uh, image right here, it's on the left side of my material, because if I was to rotate this 180 degrees, it would be the same image as that one. I am still on the left side of the line to cut, okay? That's my G41. That's what we're gonna be using the majority of the time because we wanna be climb cutting because there's so many benefits of using climb cutting when, when we're machining, okay? G42, all right? If you'll notice down here, it is to the right of the line to cut or my material, okay? So same thing, if I was to flip this 180 degrees, if you look right here, I'm also going that direction, but I'm on the right side of the line to cut, okay? So now we know that we have to turn it off once we turn it on. We know G41 is to the left and G42 is to the right, okay? So let's look at this a little bit deeper, okay? So a rule of thumb is you need to move more than the diameter of the tool when turning on cutter comp, okay? So what does that mean, okay? So if I look at point A right here, point A is going to be my origin or my X, Y, zero location, okay? So by doing that, I need to make sure that when I come down from home to my Z cutting plane, I need to make sure that I am not at X, Y, zero. The reason why is because when I turn on cutter comp, I need to be moving towards my part. I can't turn it on while going up and down in Z. I have to turn it on when moving towards the line to cut, okay? So if we look right here, you'll notice that he's using a half inch tool and I've got, I'm over 475 thousandths, okay? So they're not quite that far on the half the diameter, okay? But some machines are set up for radial. So in this case, his machine set up for radial he can move that less amount than half an inch, okay? So you'll see in my demonstration, I'm actually going over five eighths on both directions, okay? So what I'm looking right here is he's also got a minus 100 thousandths in his Y, okay? This is just positioning the part away from the center of the pull, okay? So with that being said, I come down Z minus 250 thousandths, okay? And then if you look right here, G41, X0, D01. Okay, so what is the G01? Okay, so if I look right here at G43, G43 has to have an H for my tool length. Well, a G41 has to have a D because what this machine is doing is it's looking in the offset. So let's show you where that's at. So if I look at my offsets, right here okay so there's that g43 and it's looking for that h value okay well it knows it's a minus five inches but i'm not using g43 i'm using g41 so if you look over here in my program i'm using d02 so i've got g41 i am moving towards the part 
and I have a D02. So that means when I come to my setup on my machine, I have D for diameter, I'm gonna put a half inch into that geometry column, okay? Because what my machine's thinking is G41, I'm gonna come to this page, okay? I'm looking for my D value, and then which D value am I looking for, okay? So they come together, and it knows that my tool is a half inch in diameter, okay? And that's how it will move. So coming back here, you'll see that he's moving towards X zero. He's moved from here to there, and he has turned on cutter comp. Reemphasize, he is turning on cutter comp while moving towards the line to cut. If you'll notice, he's also making a perpendicular move to the line he is about to cut. Okay, that might be a little hard to understand at the moment, but if I'm going up, I wanna approach it from the left. I wanna come and make a 90 degree angle. Okay, so I'm turning it on right here, and then I'm coming up. So that way the center of my tool is not going to the center of there. The center of my tool is coming right here, which is half the diameter away from the edge. Okay, at which point in time, I'm going to go all the way around my part, okay? When I am done with my part, he's actually just doing this one side, I'll be going all the way around. So once he's gotten to this point right here, notice how G40, okay, he is moving away from the previous point, okay? So my previous point, he is at an X two inches, 600 thousandths, he's moved off the part, and now he is moving He's turning it off, okay? If I turn it on, I have to turn it off. He's turning it off and he's moving away while he's turning it off. Have to remember, very important, when I'm turning it on, I'm moving towards the material. When I turn it off, I am moving away from the material, okay? If you get an alarm saying you have some interference with CRC, you might not be moving far enough away from where you're currently at, okay? Because if he only moved about a hundred thousandths, that's not enough for that cutter compensation to cancel itself. So it will throw you an alarm. Same thing when I'm picking up. If I don't move over far enough towards my line to cut, it will as well alarm out. Okay, so now that we know G41 is cutter comp to the left, line to cut, I'm on the left. I have to move more than the total diameter of my end mill to turn it on, and then I have to move away from the material to turn it off, okay? So now let's go to an actual program, and let's actually see what we're gonna look at, okay? I have a part right here, and this is what we're gonna be doing. So my toolpath, I'm gonna start right here, okay? It's gonna be my start point. I'm going to move up here, and then I'm gonna continue to move this direction, okay? Because I'm on the left side of the line, I'm going to turn on G41 while making my move towards the part, okay? And then when I go all the way around it, you'll see my tool, it's gonna to come a little bit past, okay? It's gonna come a little bit past it so that I make sure my tool cleans up where I came into the material, okay? And then at which point, I will come down and that will be my G40, okay? So, with that being my 41 of 40, I'm going to make my customized tool, okay? So, what my tool path will look like is it will start here, it will come up, and it will go all the way around, okay? Now, keep in mind where the side of my tool is at, okay? I'll come all the way around, past my point where I started, and then I'm going to come down, okay? and then I'll return back to my starting point. So if I wanna do multiple Z levels, I can do that, okay? Now, why do we use G41, okay? Because if I program this part with center line, okay, my tool is now violating the profile that I'm trying to make. So at this point, if I just do my straight line programming, okay, same code, as you can see, my tool is cutting into the material by turning on G41 and telling my machine how big the diameter is, when it moves to the part, it puts the side of the tool at the side of the material, okay? 
it puts it right there, okay? So that means that it's not gonna cut my profile away and my program will look identical with and without cutter comp in it, okay? It's just the cutter comp allows me to stay off the line. So enough about that. Let's go ahead and see what it's gonna do, okay? I've got my tool up there. I'm using a half inch end mill. It's tool number two. Uh, rule of thumb I like to state is when I'm using tool number two, my H also has to match. My D also has to match. Three variables, let's have them all match, okay? That way it'll keep from any errors in here. I have my tool diameter set at a half inch on D2 because I am using D2, okay? And that profile, all that code right there is the actual profile going around the part. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna open up our simulator. We're gonna turn on single block and we're gonna go ahead and go through it. Okay, so there's my tool. Okay, something to remember on these simulators is until I have gone past the line that's highlighted, it has not executed yet, okay? So I'm going to G54, X, I'm going to a, a clear point is what I'm doing to you, okay? I'm going to that clear point. I have just moved to the clear point. I am coming down in Z, okay? So now what I wanna notice is I am about to activate G41, I'm about to activate my cutter comp. So I'm going to go to the bottom of my material, that line to cut. I've activated my D02, okay? So that means I'm gonna be going around it all the way and doing my radius, and then I'm going to be coming back across it, and then I'm doing all these paths just like I have in my machine, okay? So what happens is, if you'll notice, that I did come off of that material, okay? That was my starting point. I did come past my starting point, however much you think you need to go past it, okay? If you feel like you need to go past it, a thousandths, a hundred thousandths, if you wanna come all the way off the part, you can do that. But it's important that you do go past where you started, okay? At this point in time, I'm going to turn off my cutter comp. Now remember, I haven't turned it off yet until I hit the cycle start one more time. So I have moved away from my material and I have turned off cutter comp, okay? So now that I've turned off cutter comp, I'm gonna return back to where I started. So now I can come back down deeper in my Z and then I can just take that, that code, I can copy and paste it and I can put it right back in there. There's no need to retype all that code. I can literally just go up here, and see if we can do it, okay? We'll go into our edit mode. Okay, that's my pocket right here. See if we can get back over there. Okay, we're up there. I'm gonna come down. And like I said, all I need to do is copy and paste these variables. So I'm gonna hit F2. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna hit F2 again. I'm gonna come down just a little bit and I'm just gonna hit enter. Now if I hit enter, what'll happen is it'll put that in there and then I'll have two different codes right there and I can use those passes. I don't have enter on my screen right here, so I'm not able to do that. But all I would do is change the my Z level to a minus 100 thousandths and it would do the same thing. It would go all the way back around it, okay? So that's how you use the G41, cutter radius compensation, also known as CRC. With that said, you guys now know how to turn it on, move more than half the diameter of your tool, stay to the left of my part going around it, and whenever I leave my profile pass, I can move more than half the diameter of the tool and turn off G40. And like I said, all this information is in your book. If you have any more questions, come and see me or email me. Uh, this, my name is Aaron Runt. Thank you so much for watching.